Hello, this is me, Shadow Queen 9000, giving a review of Assassin's Creed 3. First of all, before I get into the review, I'm gonna talk about the, the development of the game. Um, okay, basically, Ubisoft developed this game. It took three years into making it develop, and I read, I I read and I watched old documentary videos about about the creation of Assassin's about the creation of Assassin's Creed 3. And I they put the heart and effort into this game. And this game has been a success. It got a 10 out of 10, 9.5 from Game Informer. This game was the best game of the year. And I really think Assassin's Creed 3 lived up to so much hype that I just can't wait to play. When, when I heard about this game coming out, about the time of the American Revolutionary War, it was so perfect. I felt like I was vested in the time period. I love this time period. I don't know why, but it's like a time when America, a time when America revolted, a time when America began, the rise of America, and we won and we succeeded from the British. I think this is probably my favorite time period in American history, besides Civil War, and the Great Depression and World War Two, I think that Assassin's Creed Three lives up to so many things like that are amazing. That the one thing I respect about the game is probably it is visual. It's a visual masterpiece. This game is a visual masterpiece. It has when it's snow like they talk about in Death of the Snow, and the snow is so amazing that like when you walk in the snow, like 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 if you're walking very in the snow in winter time the snow affects how you walk and you walk so slow and deeply and like like they say to say you have you have to use the trees to climb and in this game you can hunt you can hunt food i'm sorry you don't hunt for food you hunt for animals and skin them and you sell them to the market and you gain money and i really think that assassin's creed 3 is probably one of the best games in the franchise and the in Ubisoft it's 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 the Ubisoft's best creation because it tells a story of Rhaegon the Hun, which which is named Connor, which Davenport get which Davenport well, killing Davenport gives to him because his son was Connor. And he's he he's an old assassin, he retired he retired pretty much. And um and he like he, he acts like a mentor to him. Like, before all that stuff, we start off a character called Hathen Kenway, which is, um, which is Connor's father. These are, by the way, this review is spoiler alert. Do not, if you have not, wa if you have not seen the game or played the game, then do not watch this review. Hathen, basically, like, in London, he assassinates a man who has a key to, the, um, to opening the vault in modern day times. And then, um, pretty much, it's like 1754 before the American Revolution, before Connor. And then, um, he, he gets the piece. He is assigned to go to America and find the vault, which he does at some later point. And then when he gets to America, he meets Charles Lee, one of his greatest allies before the end of the game. And, um, they form a Templar Brotherhood with Thomas Hickey, um... Benjamin Church, um, Charles Lee, and many others, and pretty much, like, they're Templars, spoiler alert, pretty much, basically, they're Templars, and they're trying to sneak and control Boston and New York, pretty much, that they, they seek to control the land, and now this is how they do it. They control the land, um, they control, they basically, before they control the land, they start getting members, and they also, and they, and they also try to get information about the vault, and this is how they do it. They get, they find their members, and, um, and then they, um, and then, and then they are tasked, and then they are tasked to find the vault. So then, they help Native American, they help Native Americans, which is the Mohawk tribe, which is Connor's tribe. In, in in a few more sequences before this, um, he frees the he he frees them, and then he meets a woman which he falls in love with, and has Connor with. They fall in love, they fall in love. They have Connor, and she also sells him the vault, 
Um, but he can't get in because he needs the apple of Eden, which, which, which the clan mother possesses. And then m many years later, uh, nine years later, pretty much, or a few years later, Connor's five or four. Um, he's speaking Mohawk. He's with his mother. He plays with the children, and then he see Charles Lee gets up to him, and pretty much says, um, "Where is your village?" And he's um. And like you're like smart for a savage. What is your name, Charles Lee? And then pretty much Connor is basically Connor's horsing situa situation. He can't get out of because he was really young back then. And then they knock him out. Like in this picture right here, they knock him out. He's like this. He's like this. And he's like this when he's asking questions to him. And then, um, basically is um. They knock him out. They burn the village to the ground. Connor Connor's mother's dead. Nine years later. And then Connor's a young, a young man, and then pretty much Connor basically goes to the dead mother. He basically he finds his purpose. He seeks the apple of Eden, and then he gives apple of Eden, and then Juno appears, and they basically fly around Boston. He tell she tells the future about their land, but the Templars seek to control the land, and you must seek the assassin, and you must seek the assassin. It's the, Basically, logo. He finds he finds the logo. He finds Achilles' dashboard. It takes a, a couple of tries to get into his house, and then you, and and then and then you defend his property, of um, for Templars, and then he trains you the art of assassins. But you have to prove yourself. On the way there, you are doing uh, homestead missions, which is prove which is proving your which is proving your land. And then he meets a person that controls the Achillea, which is the ship that Connor that Connor uses in the game. And then pretty much, um, basically, basically you meet him, you restore the ship, and then after that you go to you go to um, you go to Boston, and then pretty much you seek out supplies to rebuild the homestead. And then on on there you. Um, the Boston Massacre takes place, and then Connor sees his father, Hathen, which is about to do a sub pl plot something. Achilles says, stop him, and then he stops him, and then the Boston Massacre appears, and then, and then basically, Connor's blamed, and then he meets someone called Samuel Adams, which we know from the history books. Basically, they meet... They fed it, they set him free. He they go back to the Davenport many years later. Um basically Connor's kinda like you know, naive and basically young. And like it takes him a couple of years to uh, to arm his to gain the knowledge uh, to arm himself with the knowledge of assassin. And then like seventeen seventy. Well, sequence five, he becomes the assassin. He puts on the robes and he and he starts his hunt. To kill the Templars and save his people. Pretty much he does this. He succeeds. And then he kills everybody. And then like, towards the end of the game, he again, he fails. Basically, towards the end of the game, Achilles dies. Um, he, he, um, he kills everyone. And then, um, pretty much, um, he gets the piece to the vault. Juno asks to hide it. He hides in he hides in the grave during the death port, and then basically Connor has failed his people because they moved and and the United States bought it. So Connor like has to do more now. So pretty much like that. That's the story review. Now let me that that's the whole entire story, and I think I I briefed it up in a few minutes. Basically, I think Connor. Connor's story is very unique, and I have to admit, Connor, um, story develop the story development in this game, especially Connor, and all the characters feel so real. They have personalities. They have, like, Ubisoft talked about g g giving them real, giving them real personalities and stuff like that. They did that very well. Charles Lee's kind of like angry, at, like George Washington is kind of like a peaceful man, like who, like who wants to win the war. Achilles is kind of like acting like a mentor. Connor's kind of like, basically, is he he tries to he tries to strive, he tries he tries to, to to strive and fight for his people. And like the Templars in this game are really realistic. At the at the, Hathen is probably one of the best Templars ever, ever 
probably one of the best Templars that you face and you contact with. You have missions with him like father and son, and I really think that Connor's story is fantastic. I felt for him in every way. I think that Connor has one of the best assassin stories ever told. Connor should, um, Connor completed his mission, but his mission's not complete yet. He must, he must, um, he must, he must do something more. He must do something more. By the way, this game takes place, um, longer than expected. Before the American Revolutionary War until 1783, you play as Hayden in the beginning until... Until sequence four, until se until until sequence something, and then for the rest of the game you play as Connor. It's 1754 and up until 1783, and pretty much you you get a lot of story from Hayden and Connor. Pretty much, I think that Connor's story is so striving for. He's so powerful, like he's so strive. His mission is his mission. His motivations in the game are really perfect. Because I really think Connor's journey, becoming an assassin, growing up, arming knowledge, becoming a man, rising up from challenges against before you, protecting his people, fi fighting for his land. I think that Connor proved himself well enough that he's the one of the best assassins, one of the best assassins out there in the series right now. Probably fan favorites, probably Etsy, probably Etsy and Altair. But Connor kind of beats all of them in story and gameplay wise. Let me talk about the gameplay. Basically, you, you, Ubisoft described um, Assassin's Creed 3 will be dual combat. That means Connor can fight with two weapons at the same time. And they also described the time period was very brutal. So, Connor's kills were so brutal. And, like, basically, when enemy attacks you, yeah, you, ha you have to do simulations of counters. And if I can not, I'm ready, an enemy will attack you. And basically, pretty much, they have, like, many, like, many unique enemies. You have to take down, um... You have to take down um, in a different direction, which is actually the game is smarter. The game's smarter than the other games, and has very unique gameplay wise. Um, the enemies aren't really not that bad. Like the enemies are, are tough, and they're they're more powerful than the other games. Like the other games, it felt like too easy to kill. Like like Ezio trilogy gameplay wise was very easy to complete. And the Connor, Connor, Connor's gameplay and story, um, Connor, um, story structure and gameplay structure fit better into the story. Well, Ezio's story was a strive for revenge, and and then to, and later and and later for for freedom. Well, stop. Well, I don't know about freedom, but more like revenge. And then pretty much like his gameplay was so easy, like it like. Ezio's gameplay was leading up to Connor. It was kind of like a prototype, like leading up to Assassin's Creed 3. And like, Assassin's Creed Revelations did not have um, weather patterns and it didn't have that seasons. Like in this game, you experience summer and winter. I don't know why. They should really, like, when they made the next game, it's not realistic to put two seasons. They should put all the seasons in there. They, they don't have spring and fall, which I think they should have put all the seasons. It's more realistic that way than skipping the summer. That does not make any sense. Why do they put winter and summer? You can't do spring and fall? That doesn't make any sense. That's what, that's the one thing, one, one tiny tidbit about the game. Also, one big thing about the game. The game has weird glitches. For example, I was playing yesterday. Um, pretty, I was playing yesterday. Um... I was walking as Connor, and then I saw a dog appear out of nowhere. That's kind of weird. Assassin's Creed Three has a lot of weird glitches. That's the that's and that's that's one of the big issues about the game. That that's the biggest issue. A lot of glitches. That's the only thing about the game. Well, basically, I think that Assassin's Creed Three is one of the best looking games out there right now. Has a has, a beautiful visuals. Perfect ki perfect gameplay, and the one of the best stories told in uh, in historical fiction so far in the video game. Um, what else I have to say about Assassin's Creed Three? Um, pretty much, I think that um, that basically. Oh, oh, now Desmond's story. Another spoiler alert. Now Desmond's story leads up into everything else. All to five games. Thank God. 
basically recap. Desmond was kidnapped by Astorgo Industries, and then he was tested and find Ulta and to find the Apple of Eden in, in Assassin's Creed One. And then he learns that he learns so so much and then like that and pretty much he was and basically he meets someone named Lucy. Lucy, which is his love interest until 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 basically three games. Pretty much basically leading up to Assassin's Creed one, two and three. Well, Assassin's Creed one, two, Brotherhood. That's it. And then pretty much like Desmond loves her pretty much. She seems so sincere, but then she's actually in Revelations. She feel she she strictly was a Templar, and pretty much and then Assassin's Creed two. Desmond escapes the circle entry with the help of Lucy. Um, he, they explore they explore Ezio's memories, and pretty much like on the way there, finding the. Um, Finding the Apple of Eden again, really, um, and then um, Desmond gets his, Desmond gets all SEO skills, gains SEO skill set, and then in Brotherhood, they're trying to find um, they're trying to find um, another Apple of well, well basically they're trying to find Ezio's Apple in Assassin's Creed Two. And then pretty much in that game, De Desmond gets to the vault, another vault in Roman Coliseum. And then when they get the vault, Juno takes Desmond and kills Lucy, which she specifically was a Templar. And then Revelations, Ezio is, a is in a mind fuck. He's in the Amnesty program, the original island. He meets Subject 16, which Clay, Clay Masmeric, which is an assassin before Desmond. All well, Desmond's subject 16, uh, 17, and Clasmus Marek is subject 16, pretty much. And then in this game, you meet uh, Desmond's father, also in Assassin's Creed 3, he, he's, he's in the game. And then, pretty much, um, in this game, it's all about getting back to real. You must complete, the, you must complete, you must complete your lives of Ezio and Opair. He completes everything, he gets out of the Amnes. Clay Clay dies in the Aminus, and then the Assassin's Creed Three. They arrive at the vault, the Master Vault. They go in. They basically, he's exploring Connor. Uh, he's exploring Hathen and Connor's memories, and then he uh, he has to find these pieces of power sources around the world. In this game, you meet sub. You meet, you meet Daniel Cross, which is. If you don't know about him, he's in the comic book series developed by DC Comic Books. He's in the game. He's like he's in the game. Um, you go to different rare places. You go to Brazil and you go to some other locations. You find these power sources and you plug them in, and then the whole entire place gets blown up. The final act, modern day. Basically, they kidnap Desmond's father. You must bring the Apple of Eden. Like he, he storms the castle, finds finds Vidic, kills him, kills kills Cross, kills Cross, and um kills Cross, saves his father, get out of certain mysteries. Then a few a few a, a much later, um they find they put find the key, put it in, and then another this is like one of the best cliffhanger endings in in the series. Um, basically is Minerva and Juno talk, and Juno, Juno is basically plotting, plotting, uh, plotting against the world and try to, try to make it better, and basically Minerva tells that, like, basically Desmond, Desmond will be a savior, kind of like Jesus Christ, you'll be a legend, you'll be a hero, then legend, then God, and then Desmond this really Marora talks about life being destroyed. This says Desmond says there's no way of doing that. So then Desmond touches the thing. They both gone. He dies. And then Minerva well not Minerva, Juno basically she's she's down there somewhere and she's plot she's plotting and tries to take over the world. The end. And basically what they're trying to do is save also another thing, the whole modern day storyline was trying to invent a solar eclipse to, from destroying, destroying the world. 
And basically that sums up Assassin's Creed 3 story and also give you a recap of the other Assassin's Creed games. Okay, Assassin's Creed 3, one of the best visual master one of the best visual masterpiece gameplay and stories ever made. Ubisoft has made one of their best games. And it's on the PS3, Xbox, PS3, Xbox, um, laptop, PC, well, PC, and, um, Wii U. Um, the one thing about the game is probably the glitches. If you see weird glitches, then it's not natural. Um, game, um, multiplayer-wise, it's actually pretty better, but I haven't really explored multiplayer yet. I think that Assassin's Creed 3 campaign is one of the best one of the, it's probably one of the best games out there. Game Informer 9.5, many things like, nine, uh, like Game Informer gave it a 9.5, others gave it 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5. This is one of the best games of the year, one of the most anticipated games of the year. And I think that Assassin's Creed 3, you should buy, play, and love it. Also, interesting fact. Next year, they will be releasing a bundle. If you don't want to get Assassin's Creed 3, they'll release all five games in the bundle called Assassin's Creed Anthropology. They'll release everything. They'll release Ezio's Trilogy, Altair's, and also Assassin's Creed 3. It comes with DLC and also Assassin's Creed 3. It comes with the Season Pass, which you can get all DLC all around. That's my review of Assassin's Creed 3. Get the game. Have the best experience with the game. The only thing I recommend is avoid. Watch out for the weird glitches. Yes. Before I go, in the game you explore the frontier. It's an open world thing, and I love the frontier. is the best thing to explore, and like, like the streets of Boston and New York. I forgot to talk about. Like, I think that since I'm a New Yorker, I love New York, and I I think New York looks better than Boston, but they both look good, and I really think that, um, that Assassin's Creed 3, 10 out of 10 for me, and one thing, Tinbick, the stupid ass glitches, that's all I have to say about the game, one bad thing, and... This is me saying goodbye. Um, play all five games. Play the spin-off they have, Assassin's Creed Liberation, starring Adli the Grandpa, a French, a French, a French, a French, a French, um, a French, a French, a French, a French, a French assassin, a, a French assassin and half black, and a French and African American assassin on the PS Vita. Also, play that game. Play the five games. Play the five games. And also play the spin-offs they had. One thing I recommend about the spin-offs. Do not play Assassin's Creed Altair Chronicles. That's the worst Assassin's Creed game out there for the DS. And basically, is this is me signing off. Um, this whole entire review is spoiler for all five games. Do not watch... This video if you have not seen or played Assassin's Creed 3. Goodbye and I hope you I hope you enjoy my review and I love this game so much by the way. You got to play the game. It's fant it's visually fantastic. Goodbye.